Are you really starting to not like Derek Shelton? Is that a thing now? If so, um, wow. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dayon Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Cubs 2, Pirates 1 in the 136th home opener of your beloved Pittsburgh Baseball Club yesterday at PNC Park. I was over there. Beautiful day. Just a, other than the, well, the baseball itself (laughs) and the draping over the closed for construction 6th Street Bridge in the background. It was just the most perfect scene. Uh, And on top of that, in the morning, you had Brian Hayes putting pen to paper, Bob Nutting, for whatever it's worth at this stage, declaring that uh, the Pirates are ready to put a stake in the ground with the team uh, that they're building in Pittsburgh, which is part of why Hayes was signed the way he was, which gives at least some hope to Brian Reynolds, although I found out later in the day that they're not even talking to Reynolds There was just at least a fair amount of a positive feel at some point earlier in the day, and it all just kind of went wah, wah by the time it was over. And in something that became a little bit more common through the 2021 season than obviously it would have been or could have been in the shortened 2020 season, there's just a lot of feedback that I get in the broadest possible sense that seems to be focusing on Shelton. Now, I'm not here to tell anybody else how to feel. I do feel comfortable sharing that I'm surprised. I'm surprised uh, because the same people or a lot of the same people who look at this roster and say, this is Bush League, minor league, 4A, uh, the Altoona curve should be able to beat them, they should be relegated and everything else, also point first and foremost to Shelton after a loss. I mean, if it isn't nutting. It's a lot of nutting. But there's also Shelton, and it's about stuff like you know, lineup orders. And I went over that yesterday, so I'm not about to do it again, but lineup orders just don't matter when you have a bunch of guys who, for the most part, can't hit. Drew Smiley's out there yesterday, the lefty from the Cubs, just throwing 91-mile-an-hour fastballs. I mean, he, he also was up around 93 on occasion, but right down the pipe, you know, and they were laying off. They were trying to work him deep in the count and sent a swinging. And in a couple of cases, particularly one at bat by Daniel Vogelback, where he looked at strike two and strike three, both in the exact same location when he really, really, really needed to be swinging with a guy standing on second base. I mean, that's, that's not lineup orders. That's not the manager. It's just not a very good player. It's a player who was deemed to be disposable by the Brewers. So I'm not sure how we can have this both ways. That You can say it's a terrible team, but then wonder why the manager isn't pushing all the right buttons. The manager just doesn't have enough players right now. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. I'm not suggesting that Shelton's perfect. Okay, I've been occasionally 
really critical of his work. Not just critical, but really critical. And I have an example from this game where the Pirates had Roberto Perez drop a leadoff double into right field. And Cole Tucker comes up and the entire stadium knows that Tucker's going to bunt Perez over to third, except that he never even tried. And it made no sense. This is not a team that's going to be able to string together a bunch of hits. And when you've got a career 211 hitter up at the plate, he's in the number nine spot in the order. And his season is now off to an 0 for 10 start. I'm sorry. That's that's got to be a bunt 100 times out of 100. And it wasn't. The Pirates didn't get a run out of it. They ended up losing by one. So I asked Shelton afterward, uh, basically, why no small ball there? Is it tempting in some of those situations when you know the offense isn't there to try some small ball and maybe get some guys over? There were a couple situations. Yeah, we had a couple situations. We could have done that. One, a couple of those were not with the right guys at the plate to play small. And uh, we, we really just didn't have the right guys at the plate. Now, it doesn't take much to hear that answer, and, and in my case, to make eye contact with the man and then watch him, and this was very unusual for him, kind of looking around even before he finished his answer, eagerly awaiting the next question because this made him uncomfortable. Not because of anything he did, but because if you read between the lines there, he knew that he couldn't trust Tucker from the right side of the box to put down a bunt. That's all that meant. Well, I'm sorry. But if you're in the major leagues, even just as like part of a guest slash cameo appearance, you've got to be able to put down a bunt. And if you can't hit for power of any kind and you can't bunt, just wow, no. But to my point here, good luck laying that on the manager. Is it a answer that's avoiding the question? Sure, but he kind of has to there, or he's rolling a player under the bus that they're trying to see what they can get out of him before pressing the DFA button on a former first-round pick who finished the 2021 season in somewhat encouraging fashion and had a somewhat encouraging spring. But to try to broadly paint Shelton as the the thing here, as the the main, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. I was going to say villain. That sounds too strong, but culprit, I guess, of what's wrong with this team. Wow. Jeez, that is a big swing and a miss, which by the way, Daniel Vogelback wouldn't have known anything about yesterday. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. Time for today's J1Q. And today's comes from Tyler, who says, I was at the opener, and honestly, I think that the Pirates might be the best team in baseball at choking with runners in scoring position. Isn't it hard to watch? Yeah, Tyler, it's excruciating. And it was boring. That game was just a snooze. Even after Brian Reynolds hit the homer and in the eighth inning, the only thing you're thinking, not to put thoughts in your mind down there in the seats, but is that this is this is over because the team just went through the only couple of guys who could have possibly done any damage, meaning Hayes and Reynolds. But you got to let me say something here about runners in scoring position. The Pirates went 0 for 10 in those situations. They had five men in five separate innings reach second base and get stuck there. And that's just not the way to measure things. It's unsightly. It's, how did you put it? Hard to watch. But it's 
a symptom and it's not the cause. The cause is never how you do with runners in scoring position or whether or not you're gagging or choking or whatever other terminology you choose to use. It's that you have a team that doesn't get on base often enough. The problem isn't that you're getting out there super often but not finishing it. It'll look like that on the surface. But that metric, and yes, I'm going to get a little bit advanced here, That metric, runners in scoring position, you can throw it right out the window because it ends up balancing out over the course of the year. It's pretty much a luck thing. It's not about the batting order. It's not about getting up there and your knees are knocking or whatever. It's just that your team doesn't get on base often enough. If you think about who the most effective offensive lineups are, In baseball, in any given year, you'll see that they're the ones that just keep sending more people onto the base paths, like the gas house gorillas from the Bugs Bunny cartoon. It's just a conga around the base paths. They'll get out there via walk. They'll get out there via single. They'll clear them with a homer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They just keep reaching base safely. The Pirates are not that team. They are not going to be that team in 2022. So it won't matter if they're great with runners in scoring position or not, because way more often than not, over the course of 162 games, they won't be on base often enough. Now, that said, I feel obligated to add, anytime this discussion comes up about choking and gagging and so forth, that The one exception, the one great exception that the advanced analytics, all of the advanced analytics in the world can never fully address is how Barry Bonds stunk in the playoffs. How he'd go from MVP level to just nothingness, at least until he got out to San Francisco and was dropping his pants on a regular basis and all the rest of that stuff. Just had to throw that in there. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. I'll be heading over to the ballpark again uh, today for the 12.35 p.m. matinee. That is the conclusion of this brief two-game series against the Cubs. Zach Thompson taking the mound for the home team. Thanks again so much for listening.